Many of the most high-ranking individuals and players in the Second World War had their family members involved in the deadliest conflict the world has ever seen. Adolf Hitler, for example, had his nephews pressed into action in the German army. His favourite nephew, Heinz Hitler, was sent to the Eastern Front and he served as an officer, but he was then captured by the Soviet Red Army. Inside of a Moscow prison, he was tortured to death, despite being offered in a prisoner swap for Stalin's son. But the conflict even came to the family of the most prominent Nazis, and one man who was caught up and killed in the conflict was Ernst Hermann Himmler, the younger brother of the head of the SS, and one of the most evil men in history, Heinrich Himmler. However, Ernst Himmler was killed in the final throes of the Second World War, defending the final part of the Third Reich in the Battle of Berlin. Join us today as we look at his death, and to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Ernst Heinrich Himmler was born on the 23rd of December 1905 in Munich, and he was the third and youngest son of Joseph Gebhard Himmler, a headmaster, and Anna Maria Haider. His siblings were Heinrich Himmler, and also Gebhard Ludwig Himmler, and Ernst was the youngest of the Himmler boys. It's assumed that he had a normal upbringing, as his brothers also did, and in 1928 Ernst Himmler completed a university course in electrical engineering. However, his brother had a different idea for his career. Heinrich Himmler had become an early activist of the Nazi cause, and he joined the SS, being SS number 168, and he first achieved significant leadership positions in the SS. Heinrich Himmler told Hitler of his plans to transform the SS into a loyal and racially pure elite fighting force, and with this Himmler was appointed Deputy Reichsführer SS, before he later then became the head of the SS. Heinrich Himmler had his close support and friendship with Adolf Hitler, and he rose to become one of the most powerful men in Nazi Germany. It was his fighting force that eventually were the ones who carried out the mass killings, executions and barbarisms inside of the concentration camps. Himmler's rise was colossal, but his brother Ernst assumed a rather modest life inside of society. He joined the Nazi party on the 1st of November 1931, being member number 676,777. But like many in 1933, he then joined the SS, and his brother Heinrich then helped him to obtain a job in the Berlin radio. He was involved in many Nazi propaganda broadcasts, and then he quickly, through his brother's links to the SS, became one of the main people in the Reich broadcasting operations. He became a director of the radio broadcasts in Berlin, and with this he was often given breaking stories and leaked news from his brother, the head of the SS, then he would break them to the whole of Germany. This close relationship with his brother allowed him to get a number of exclusive pieces for the radio, and Heinrich Himmler supplied him with internal information from the Nazi hierarchy. But inside of the SS he continued to thrive, and he became a Sternbahn Führer in 1939, but ultimately Ernst's boss would be Joseph Goebbels, who was the one responsible for propaganda broadcasts, which were distributed across the Third Reich. Goebbels' strong rhetoric about Hitler and the enemies of the Nazis would lead to the German population being vociferous in their support for the regime, and along with institutions such as the Gestapo, there was very much danger for people in German society who went against Hitler and his government. This meant resistors were dealt with heavily, but the radio throughout Hitler's Germany in the Second World War played a very key part in his politics and propaganda. They even gave out free radios across the nation because of this. But as the Second World War was continuing and turning against the Germans, it is believed that Ernst Himmler remained inside of the Berlin radio. But as the end of the conflict was looming, and the Germans heading towards defeat, it was clear that the fighting would also erupt in Berlin, and that the German capital and the heart of Hitler's government would become soon a battlefield. Things at the time were very desperate, and in 1944, Adolf Hitler had called for the establishment of the Volkssturm. This was a national militia which would act as one of the last fighting forces of the Nazi-German war effort. Inside of the Volkssturm were conscripted men of between 16 and 60 who were not in military units. This was one of the final elements of a total war effort, and Joseph Goebbels called on them to overthrow the military strength of their enemy through their morale and force of will but ultimately the Volkssturm were given very basic training, and many were given basic weapons such as Panzerfaust. There was at the time a weapons shortage at this time in the war, and many members were forced to use their own uniforms, 
and fight with anything they could get their hands on. Some members of the Volkssturm were brave. For example, in one unit, it was said that, in one village, the Hertz-Bolzheim Volkssturm unit, with its customary composition of elderly men and young boys, under the influence of a few regular army soldiers, foolishly declared the town a fortress and laid mines in the streets. As American troops approached in mid-morning on April the 12th, shots from the village rang out. Angered, the Americans commenced a two-hour artillery barrage, complemented by aerial attacks that gutted the town with incendiary and high-explosive bombs. With their village engulfed in flames, the civilian inhabitants, most of the elderly, women and children, fled in search of a shelter to the surrounding fields, all while under American fire. This was brave for the Volkssturm to do, but with the group, Ernst Himmler was forced to take up arms and join the fighting detachment, and with this he must have known through his brother that there was an expectation for him to lay his life down in the final battle of the Second World War for the Nazi German cause. His brother had already started to flee during the Battle of Berlin, and he tried to negotiate peace to make his case a little bit more favourable in the eyes of the Allies. But the Volkssturm saw a huge amount of action during the Battle of Berlin, and Ernst Himmler fought inside the city he loved. This battle was hugely devastating for the German fighters, as they were heavily outfought by the Soviet Red Army, who were more experienced and better equipped. 60,000 Volkssturm members formed 92 battalions, and they took the fight to over 2.5 million Soviet troops, who bombarded the city with heavy artillery. Many members of the Volkssturm looked for places to hide from the Soviet army, and many tried to escape the certain deaths at the hands of the enemy. One of those men who wasn't so lucky as to survive was Ernst Himmler, the younger brother of the head of the SS. During the fierce street-to-street fighting, he was killed by the advancing Soviet Red Army, and it was known that he was killed in a particularly brutal part of the battle in the urban area, with every street and house being significant on the battlefield. With this, the youngest brother of Heinrich Himmler was killed, and it's not known whether Himmler learned of his brother's death before he later took his own life in Allied captivity. Ernst Hermann Himmler is the younger brother of the head of the SS, who died in the final throes of the Battle of Berlin. His recorded date of death coincides with the end of the final battle inside the heart of the Nazi heartlands, and with this, the conclusions can be reached that he was fighting until the final throes of the dice. Hitler had already taken his life days before, but on the 2nd of May 1945, Ernst Himmler was killed. The city as garrison then surrendered, but fighting continued in pockets of the city until the end of the war in Europe came on the 8th of May 1945. But Ernst Himmler was the younger brother of one of the most evil men of the Second World War, and his brother inflicted so much hatred and suffering, as well as death, during the most deadly conflict in history. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.